live from the British Colonial Hilton Hotel, Dare to be Great, with Master Motivator, Spence Finlayson. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome the host and creator of Dare to be Great TV show, Diana's Last Child, the Master Motivator, Bahamian born, world renowned motivational speaker and trainer, Mr. Spence Finlayson. I want to start off right now with a quote from a man named Charles Swindle, a reverend, who talked about attitude. He said, attitude to me is more important than money, than circumstances, than failures, than what other people think or say or do. He said, it will make or break a company, a church, or a home. He said, the remarkable thing is that we have a choice every day regarding the type of attitude we will embrace. He said, I'm convinced that life is 10% of what happens to me, and 90% of it is how I respond to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitudes. Give yourself some love for me, please. Oh, man. It's kind of difficult right now. The, there's a downturn in the economy. Uh, there's layoffs. There's downsizing. There's recession. There's all kinds of things going on. That's why it's important to have faith to make it today. And that's right. We need to have the kind of faith that the apostle Paul talked about to call for those things that be not as though they were. Because faith is the oil that takes the friction out of living. When you have faith, it will allow you to turn the liabilities into assets, stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Your load may get heavy, but your knees won't buckle. You may get knocked down, but you won't be knocked out. Give yourselves another round for me, please. Oh, oh man. Woo! Man. But you know, I want you to look at someone again next to you and shake their hand and say, whatever you're seeking, it's also seeking you. Shake somebody's hand for me, please. Whatever you're seeking is also seeking you. It's coming right in your direction. That's right, Brother Kobe. It's coming right in your direction. Right in your direction. Right in your direction. But you know, a lot of times, uh, Brother Darvel, a lot of times we procrastinate in life. And that's right. What is it really? We, we procrastinate in life. We procrastinate a lot. Uh, you know, but uh, let me see a show of hands, all those who believe they procrastinate a lot. I'm kind of guilty. I'll put up two hands this afternoon. Yeah, sometimes. Yes, yes. But you know, procrastination robs us. And that's right. Yeah. Um, the people who brought me into this business was originally from Dallas, Texas, and then they moved to Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, I was uh, training with them in Phoenix. I had spoken in Phoenix at the Embassy Suites downtown in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And when I was finished, uh, they asked me, uh, the, the gentleman shared this story with me, Ron William, who brought me to the business. This story is called Doing It Now, Avoiding Procrastination. He said that when he grew up in Arizona, he had a friend of his who lived in, in, in Scottsdale, right outside of Phoenix, who wanted to be rich and successful and to be able to retire at age 40, like most of us in this room. And that's right. So this guy worked hard, and he was successful enough to retire at 40. So he said, the only thing he wants to do now is travel around the world on cruise ships, yachts, and whatever else, then relax in Arizona, play some golf, and play with his grandchildren. But he had one problem. Can you guess what it was? He had no grandchildren. That's right. So guess what he did? He called a family meeting, Brother Prince. He called the sons over with the daughters and the wives over with the, with the husbands, and he sat them down to the dining room table. But a lesson, he said, kids, before we eat dinner, I have an announcement to make. He said, I've just opened up a trust fund in the amount of $1 million in the name of the first grandchild to be born. He said, now let's bow our head and say grace. Then he raised his head up. Nobody was at the table. They all went to do it now. Do it now. Come on, man. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now, son. Let's do it right now. Do it now, Brother Butler. Do it now. Do it now, dog. They all saw the urgency in doing it now. Let's do it now. But you know, a, a great philosopher was a man named Henry David Thoreau. And Dr. Martin Luther King followed him, uh, was a disciple of Thoreau. But Thoreau said something about success that's very powerful. He said, if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. If one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with success unexpected in common hours. That's some powerful stuff. But do you know, um, life is shorter than we think, you know. Things happen very fast, and that's right. Things happen very fast. Years ago, the saying was here today, gone tomorrow, but today it's now here today, gone today. But as I dare you to be great, we need to give a special round of applause for a man named Usain Bolt out of Jamaica. Give that man some love. Oh, man, awesome. Awesome, Dorelli, awesome. Man, woo, wow. Jerome Gomez, that reminded me of your days as a track star. Back at St. Augustine's. Yes, yes, you're saying both. Just awesome. But the Caribbean is certainly taking its place. And that's right. It's rightful place. We're measuring up and we're passing them. That's why I encourage you today to dare to be great. Give yourselves another round.
Arnold Schwarzenegger was a man who was successful in three areas of his life in one lifetime. Three areas. He started off as a championship bodybuilder in his native Austria, right? And then he parlayed that success into a top box office movie career with movies like Terminator and Eraser and all those. And then he parlayed that success over into becoming the governor of the largest state in the United States, the governor of California. Three successes in one lifetime. He dared to be great. Give him some love. Oh, man, give him some love. Give him some love. But be careful. Be careful of the people who you come in contact with, Brother Mage. They're not much crowd. You know those people, Calvin? They're not much crowd, those people? Not much? You ask them how, how they're doing or what's going on, they say, not much, not much, not much. You have to be careful of those people. Yeah, because if you've been on this side any appreciable lane of time, some things should be happening in your life. Some things should always be happening, that's right. Yeah, you ask me what's happening, I have a whole lot of things going on. A whole lot of things. But the one that really makes me laugh is that when they honor somebody and they would say, well, I've known Brother Colby for 40 years, and he's the same man that I know today that I knew back then. Something's wrong with Brother Colby. <laughs> if he's been that same way for 40 years, there should be some appreciable growth. And that's right. Believe in yourselves and believe in your dreams and stay away from the negative people because they sap your energy and they make you weak. That's right. I break off and run from negative. Yeah, I run, I run from negative people when I see them coming. I have to break off and run. Oh, man, I haven't had this much fun since I was in reform school, having a good time here today. I haven't had this much since I was in reform school. Do something else again for me, please. Look at someone right now on your left and right and shake their hand and say, you're beautiful and I'm beautiful too. Shake somebody's hand, please. Yeah, Brother Richard, yeah. Yeah, shake somebody's hand for me. Yeah, shake somebody's hand for me. But do you know, success takes time, as we dare to be great. Success takes time. Eli Manning uh, was the quarterback for the New York Giants, and still is. They played the Super Bowl last year, and everybody and the brother thought the New England Patriots were going to win the Super Bowl. Some of you in this room lost, well, some money in the game, I'm sure. <laughs> they just thought that New England was he heavily favored. But Eli Manning came in and upset the Patriots and ended up winning the Super Bowl. Well, a reporter interviewed him immediately after the game, and Eli Manning said a number of things, but he finally said, you know, success takes time. And that's right. Success takes time. Because Eli Manning, for four years, heard the derisive laughter and comments in New York City, and they asked, why did they draft this man to play with the Giants? He can't play. He's not like his brother Peyton Manning. What are we going to do with him? We want him out of New York. But he continued to play, and he worked hard at it, and he became a Super Bowl champion. Success takes time. Brother T.D. Jakes said it well, you know. People see T.D. Jakes now at this big church in Dallas and so forth, and they think it's always been like that. But T.D. himself said it's never, it wasn't always like that. As a matter of fact, in the early days in West Virginia, T.D. was preaching to just a few people. And he preached just as hard as the same few people. Success takes time. But that's why I encourage you to dare to be great today. Now, when you're going in to the last mile of the way, just inside the eastern gate over there, they're getting ready to sing, Father along, we'll know all about it, and all these good things. There'll be two giant screens. One would be showing what your life is. The other one would be showing what your life could have been. Oh, my God, think about it. One big screen showing the life that you actually lived. The other one showing you the life that you could have lived. Mm -hmm. Let's bring them together. Let's bring them together. Two giant screens. Think about it. That's why it's important to take a personal inventory of your life. Uh, to find out your strengths and your weaknesses. William Shakespeare said that many of us go to our graves with our music still inside of us because we haven't had a chance to release it. And they tell me the richest piece of real estate anywhere in the world is the graveyard because that's where all the great ideas go. We didn't get around to doing it. But you know, fear stops us a lot of time. Yeah, fear. Fear stops us. Fear paralyzes people, you know. Fear paralyzes people to the degree that they don't want to leave home. They don't want to leave home. They're just afraid of life. They're afraid of life. I'm going to close on this note right now, this segment. The Olympics is on now, and I'm sure everybody's watching it. And technology is so great. Uh, my brother is in Beijing. He called me yesterday, and I thought he was just around the corner. I mean, it's just crystal clear. But he's in Beijing at the Olympics. Now, this takes me back. I, all of you have seen uh, Phelps win the eight medals. Phenomenal. As a matter of fact, one of those, I really thought that he didn't make it. Uh, touching the pool at the end, right? I really didn't think. Uh, I still have a little question on that. But anyhow, he won eight gold medals. But before Phelps, there was a man named Mark Spitz. Mark Spitz added his name in 